Hey, what's up everybody? Nate here from Out of the Basement bringing you a brand new action figure review. Today from McFarlane Toys, we're taking a look at the DC Multiverse Arkham Asylum Joker. Took me a little while to find this figure out in the wild, but thankfully my Walmart ended up coming in clutch. Of course, I've already taken a look and reviewed Batman. If you haven't checked out that review, I highly suggest you go take a look. So, super excited to check out the Joker. Of course, I think, uh, you know, spoiler alert, I already took him out of the package, but I think he is the superior figure out of the two. So let's take a quick look at the package here. Of course, you got the window box with the Joker. You can see all of his accessories. DC Multiverse, the Joker. On the side, the same thing. On the back, we've got a video game image of the character there the other figures in the wave as well on the side it says joker and then batman arkham asylum the dc logo the mcfarland logo on the bottom here not a whole lot going on on the top nothing going on so let's go ahead we're going to take this guy out of the package we'll look at the accessories and then the figure itself as always with these dc figures you get the stand and the card that are actually uh attached on the back card right here so you have to rip them off if you want to get them personally i don't like to do that i don't think it's really worth it for the card nor the stand okay first up we have a closed set of the chattering teeth from the game the little wind up things that you gotta hit with the battering and they look pretty nice you can see they uh look like the chattering teeth in the game you got some nice silver paint right there for the wind up feature the gums are a nice pink and the teeth are painted white with a little bit of a black wash all throughout the teeth here so that looks pretty nice pretty good accessory to come with arkham joker then we also get a set of open teeth here which again look really nice pretty much the same standard quality there you can see there's the little gear right there which is a little sloppy but the teeth and everything look pretty nice especially from a distance of course looking up close and personal you're going to notice more things you could really see the black wash there on the top then we also have a nice big oversized revolver for the joker which looks really nice it's got some nice clean silver paint on it along with this black handle here looks really good sculpt is nice it off the top of my head looks like a weapon the joker would use i'm not quite sure if he had a revolver like this in arkham asylum which is pretty embarrassing because i just played the game literally this year and i've already forgotten about it so uh i'm just gonna go ahead and say yeah he had this in the game but it looks good and it fits with the character fits with the aesthetic of the game as well so overall some pretty nice accessories not a whole lot coming with them but now let's take a look at the actual figure all right and here is the arkham asylum joker out of the packaging and he looks absolutely fantastic of course just to get it right out of the way definitely doesn't look 100 percent super accurate to the game especially in the face but from the neck down game accuracy is off the charts and i think the head still looks pretty good it still looks like the joker and it is reminiscent of the arkham joker it's just there's something that's just a little bit off about the head sculpt, but to me, that's okay. Like I said in the last video, which I called them NECA figures and everyone corrected me. Uh, for some reason, I thought they were NECA, but the old DC collectibles, Arkham stuff, uh, just is very expensive now. And honestly, I've seen some side-by-side -side images and I think that this one might even look better than the original release from back in the day. So let's go ahead. We're going to take him off the stand. We'll take a closer look at the details, and then we'll take a look at the articulation. All right, up close and personal with the Joker. And you can see here that the head sculpt still does look really nice. He's got some nice furrowed brow sculpting in there. It's kind of hard to see because my lights are so bright. But he's got the nice green hair with the black wash, and it looks pretty damn awesome all the way around. Really nice sculpt work, the sort of slicked back stylized look he's got that nice grin as well you can see the teeth in there are painted pretty well and along with the face some really clean red paint for the smile the eyes are a little googly not too bad of course i had like three or four to pick from this was the best one i found but like i was saying the head still while might be mildly off from the actual game i think it's 
still very reminiscent of that version of the Joker. And moving down, you can see the suit has some really nice sculpt work there that actually looks like some real cloth. You can see all the stripes in the purple there. That looks really amazing. Really, really nice sculpt work on that. And along with the undershirt right here, you've got a nice gold button look along with the yellow shirt with a nice black wash over it just to give it that little bit of detail. Same thing with the flower there. Really nice detailing on that. He's got some gold buttons on the jacket that are painted very well. The buckle down there, which is also painted very well and has some nice sculpt work in there. I think it's supposed to be the Joker on the belt as well. And you can see that the belt, the actual belt is sculpted and painted on there. You can see the black running through the figure and it even goes all the way through to the back of the figure there, which is awesome. Missing some gold paint on the back of the jacket though. The chain right here is also applied very well and it's sculpted on there. It's actually raised out. Really, really nice, wonderful details there. And moving down, not a whole lot of paint, just more purple plastic. And the shoes also look very nice. They have that white paint applied to them as well. Looking very good. The details are very nice on this version of the Joker. The hands are also really nice sculpted glove work there. The ruffles right here also have that yellow with a black wash over it just to bring that little bit of detail out there. So yeah, the sculpting and the paintwork on Joker is absolutely incredible, especially for a $20 action figure. The unique sculpt, the amount of sculpting on the figure just looks absolutely fantastic. And uh, I think, again, like I was saying with Batman, McFarlane is heating up. They're showing us what they're really going to do with DC characters. And this Joker is definitely a shining example of what can be done. So let's go ahead and take a look at the articulation. For the head, the Joker can look up about that far and he can look down pretty far as well. The head is on a ball, so you can rotate it around, give him some attitude, some nice cocked head poses. It looks really great, and it functions very well. Get a lot of little nuanced poses out of the head. Looking really awesome there. Shoulders move out very far. He also has the butterfly joints, although it really is kind of hard to get it functioning on this figure because the chest piece is soft here so i'm gonna say those are pretty much useless it is still nice that it's there but yeah you don't really get much out of this because this is so soft it sort of is working against the joint there you got the bicep swivel and double jointed elbows that give you way more than 90 degrees that's absolutely awesome of course you have the mcfarland ball joints in the wrist that can move side to side or up and down although for the joker it is hidden in the wrist so it looks really good but at the same time it is very hard to get it to manipulate to move to the other direction so i have thankfully mine out of the box came with the up and down which is what i would prefer for a gun holding hand but uh, if you want to manipulate it to the other side you're gonna you're gonna struggle a little bit with that for the ab crunch joker can move down very far although he wants to pop back up but you can see that the range of motion keeps going there with this soft material there of course it gets a little bent as well but without it wanting to move back up that's what you get going forward and going back crazy amount of range there you can see all the way up it's hard to see on camera but you can see all the way up in there so great range of motion for the chest. Of course, it does swivel as well. So you get that movement there. And I think this is a, another example of the soft chest piece working really well for McFarlane. The legs can kick up very far with Joker's foot on the ground here. The double knee works out really well as well. Total complete range there. Really, really nice articulation. He does also have a little bit ever so slight thigh swivel right there. I'm not sure if it's actually supposed to be like that because this leg doesn't really do it, but this one kind of does. Who knows? Might be frozen. 
And for the feet, again, you have the McFarland ankle hinges, but the foot goes down about that far. It goes up not really much at all. You got the toe hinge, which is a little crazy and uh, doesn't really work all that well because it's so far back, but you know. And of course you get the ankle pivot. And again, the feet are probably the biggest oof for the articulation just because the sculpt work here gets in the way. So now that we looked at the articulation, let's go ahead and compare him to some other action figures. All right, here he is next to the McFarlane Superman and the Arkham Asylum Batman. And I gotta say, I think Joker is just a little too tall. In my mind, he's shorter than Batman, and I'm pretty sure he's shorter than Batman in the game. And as you can see right here, he's honestly uh, bigger than Batman, but it's not the end of the world. I definitely think you can fudge it, especially if you put them in action poses or something like that, but side by side, that's what you're getting. Then here he is with the MK11 Spawn and the Mattel Dark Knight Joker. And finally, with my previous review, which was the GameStop Shadow Stormtrooper and the NECA Armored Batman. So overall, I think that this Joker figure is absolutely awesome. Really one of the best McFarlane DC figures we've gotten so far. He's got really great sculpt work, really nice paint apps, and a ton of... He's got a ton of fun articulation. He might be a little too big, especially when you have him right side by side by Batman. But honestly, that's not the biggest deal to me in the world. I think that the detailing and paint apps and all that and the articulation more than make up for his uh, larger size. So that is my review for the Arkham Asylum Joker from McFarlane Toys. What did you guys think? Are you going to pick this one up? Did you already pick it up? Let's talk in the comments down below. Of course, if you enjoyed my review, don't forget to leave a like on this video. Subscribe if you're new. We're always talking about action figures on the channel, mostly Star Wars The Black Series, but every once in a while, old Nady old boy will throw in a nice McFarlane figure for you guys. Upcoming next later this week is going to be the G.I. Joe Classified Series Snake Eyes, which I'm very excited to show you guys that figure. So you're going to want to hit subscribe and stay tuned for that. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time.